Anthony Ireland was a three-time all-conference first-team performer in the WCC. He scored over 2,000 points and has found himself in some of the top professional leagues in the world. This was an awesome conversation to learn how his visualization, his meditation process, and how even changing his diet allowed him to tap into his peak performance. His description on flow really resonated with me, and I think it will resonate with a lot of people who play sports or don't even play sports. Uh, we even discussed some of his peak performances, uh, one being against Gonzaga, and even a game winner he had where he visualized the whole scenario before it even happened. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy just the his authenticity and uh, really be able to, to learn something from you know, what he has learned on his process and his journey as someone who continues to play overseas and uh, is hoping to you know, make an impact on people around him. So enjoy the flow and uh, keep tuning in. Hello and welcome to the Flow Station Podcast. I'm your host, Will Ferris, and as always, the goal is to help you cultivate your unique flow by bringing on guests who have tapped into theirs. Speaking of someone who's tapped into theirs, I got Anthony Ireland in the building today. Very grateful to have him in the building. He probably drove, what, an hour today? Yeah, I drove about 45 minutes an hour, <laughs> but it's all good, man. So for the for the podcast, man, appreciate yeah. you, bro. No, mo- none much below, man. We're about to let it flow today. Yeah. So just to get that going, get the get the conversation going, man, how do you uh, describe flow for you, you know, in, um, in, in terms of basketball, but also off the court as well? That's an interesting question, man. Um, I would say just just being in flow with yourself, being on that, that frequency when you're, um, you know, not doing, not pressing too much, not doing too much but just going with um with what's in your nature um and what and what you love to do um and I think and I think that it's hard to to tap into just because we have a lot of distractions especially with social media and um everything that we have going on work and just every you know everybody's got something going on so it's hard to just you know be into that flow be into that groove and you know like I said because of the distractions and um so the more you're able to be with that flow i think you know you're in flow with the universe you're in flow with your purpose and you know you're you're true to your true self yeah i mean there's a lot to impact in just that answer right there Mm -hmm. in terms of the distractions that's something that i've definitely taken note of that has taken me out of my flow in terms of like when you get a little too lost on the phone you're scrolling a little too much you're doing that how do you buffer that for yourself um it was very difficult man like i mean I'm going to relate it to basketball, but yeah. when I first got out of college, you know, you know, I'm, I was very young in my mental state. Um, so obviously I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I'm pursuing the NBA, pursuing my dream, pursuing yeah. my goals. And, you know, I'm, I am didn't get drafted, but I'm still having workouts with, you know, teams, respectable teams, Lakers, Clippers. But, you know, I see other guys that are getting deals and other guys mm-hmm. that are getting drafted and, you know, you, you get frustrated. Um, so so that's be- became a distraction and then it took me about a year and a half to just to notice like oh this is like this is a negative pattern that I've been doing and I'm continuing to compare myself to their situation yeah um and I read a quote um comparison is the thief of the thief of happiness yeah so once I once that hit me it was kind of like wow like now I can take a step back and then kind of like you know, not judge myself as much for my thoughts, just like, just like be able to see them yeah. and realize that, that I'm not, that's not me. Like that yeah. person or that voice in my head, like I can turn that off and on and I don't have to like go totally off my emotions by that voice, you know, because mm. it can be negative if you don't know how to control it or you can be in that flow where it's right. positive, you know. So right. just being able to judge that like other person, you know, that other you know, voice in your head. Dude, that's interesting. So when you see that other thought, right. or when you see a thought come up in, into your mind, something that I, that hit me recently, it was like, you know, I'd have a bad thought or, right. or you right. know, when I was playing basketball, you know, I'm like, oh, I got to go work out or something like that. Yeah. I would buy into that thought, you know, yeah. maybe even if it wasn't the best for me or I identify with it. Yeah. And you kind of talked about it. You can either use it as a positive and go with the flow, right. or you can get caught up in it and make it this negative downward spiral. Right, right, so right. for you, is there like a space or a buffer that you, where you ground yourself in that being to where it's like, okay, or, or is there like a cue? Yeah, it's just like, um, like you said, it's kind of like a negative train. You could go down yeah. that negative train and you just kind of have just to, just to realize it and then you know, realize those thoughts and, and monitor them. Look, look, you know, see what, see what it's saying, see what's going on. And then just be like, oh, 
you know, like, yeah. that's not me. You yeah, know, like, that yeah. was me three, four years ago. I would have yeah. listened to it and just, you know, been depressed, you know, like, if I'm, like you said, if I'm not working out enough or if I'm not getting a job or not getting a job that I thought I deserved. Um, so just, like, realizing it and then just, you know, understanding that those thoughts are going to come and then just bringing it back and just be like, you know, take a breather. Yeah. I'm super into, like, meditation and, and being in the moment. So Tap like, into that, bro. Right. What's, and, what's been your practice? Um, Just... I mean, I've I've just started with, you know, trying to be present as much as I can, yeah. which is, you know, very hard to do. Um, so just, you know, ever since I was a young kid, I've always, you know, gravitated towards the secret. You know, have you, have you heard? Uh-huh. So the secret is basically like your, your thoughts become things. Um, and what you think, you what you put out in the universe will, you know, what is, comes back to you. Um, so once I realized that and then that sparked something in me, I was I was like a sophomore, junior in high school. Um, I watched that video and then read the book and then, you know, I just started, you know, meditating, you know, meditating five minutes, 10 minutes here. And then, and then that led into visual visualization, um, visualizing myself on the court, you know, what, how successful my team wanted to be, like my personal stats, what those wanted to be. And then, you know, now my routine for game day is I had like, I, it's mandatory that I meditate for at least, you know, 15 minutes before I, I go to sleep after shoot around and then probably like 10 minutes, you know, when I go to, to the, to the game, you know, so just, cool, man. it's, it's evolved for sure. But, um, you know, I feel like that has helped me tremendously, not only in basketball, but just my life and has been like, has been able to ground me. Yeah. And so when you, when you do sense a negative thought, mm-hmm. let's say, let's say you're doing a meditation after the shoot around. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh man, my shot didn't feel good today, right. or something like that. Right. What is your practice, or what is your tactic to come back to present, or come back to center? Is um, it is it you just kind of laughing at the thought? Um, I mean that that's that's a great question. I would just, I would just re, re, like refocus and like understand the amount of work I put in. Mm. You know, so the amount of work I put in is gonna overcome any negative thought. And you know, obviously when you're in basketball, you're not you're in flow, you're in rhythm. So you don't have time to think, you know, so like just resorting back to that and thinking like, you know, okay, these negative thoughts are going to happen before the game, you know, Uh but once the game time happens and the ball is tossed in the air, I'm just flowing. I'm going off my natural instincts and I've, you know, built a great foundation with the amount of work I put in, um, you know, so that's going to pay off when, when it needs to, when it needs to. Cool, man. And so when you tapped into the, some of this stuff, cause this is pretty deep stuff. I feel like for a high school kid to tap into, yeah. I was kind of the same way. I yeah. was always looking for some – I always felt like there was something more that mm-hmm. we weren't learning in school. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes without the right mentorship, that can take you down a dark path because now you're yeah. you're seeing your thoughts. Yep. You're like, oh, yep. what do I do with this stuff, yeah. you know? And so did you have some some periods where it was tough to get through? I, You know, one of my mentors and I talk about the default mode network we have in our brain, okay. which is basically – you know, you're just running on the same thoughts and patterns. You're thinking the same things all the time. Mm -hmm. And what he was basically telling me is when you start to meditate, all those things start coming at you. Like, no, Mm -hmm. you don't Mm -hmm. want to un or detach from these thoughts Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. what you think you are. Mm -hmm. So did you ever have those periods where it was like very tough for you to stay grounded and centered? Um, definitely. I mean, at an early age, it was, it was definitely a struggle. Um, but unknowingly I, I was applying like, you know, I was putting like positive thoughts out there and I would, you know, I would see it play out, Yeah. you know, so I would, I would want to score like high school, you know, you score a lot of points. So I'd want to score 28 to 32 points and then it would happen, you know? So, and then I didn't, and then that was before I even started meditating and applying the secret yeah. to my craft. Um, and then one key switch, what happened was, um, writing it down. Like, instead of like thinking about it, writing it down. And once once you write it down on paper, it becomes more powerful. So one um, one thing I did that uh, just a local basketball player taught me was when I was when I was in high school, I would tape all my goals to my ceiling, and it would be like win a state championship, win like the city league championship, average this amount of points, go Division One, and the last one would be the NBA. Yeah. And then every morning I would wake up and I would look at. I, that's the first thing I would see. So yeah. it was just that, re, you know, that affirmation, you know, constantly in my head. And then all those played out exactly how I wanted to. Mm. So then, you know, and then when I saw this, you know, when I figured out the secret and, you know, kept applying different 
different things to my to my mental to my mental state um then i looked back and was like wow like yeah. I've, I've been doing this but i didn't even know so yeah. once so now once i know how to do it you know it became a totally different ball game wow that's yeah. crazy man i have seen that when you write it write stuff down you kind of mm-hmm. get out of your own head mm-hmm. but what's been the the biggest positive for you to stop you know, always just ruminating on thoughts to moving it to something where you're actually writing it down and you can see it. Um, I would just say, you know, that, you know, that it's just, you know, my passion. And those were just, those are just goals of mine. Um, and, and then, you know, every time I seen it, I seen it play out, I would, it just, another light bulb will go off in my yeah. head. You know, like I can remember one time, you know, I'm, I'm at the free throw line. We're up at, uh, I'm in college and we're up at San Fran playing the, the Dons. And, you know, we're at the free throw line. It's about, you know, last eight seconds of the game. You know, they put they, they make a free throw to go, and then we're, they're, we're down one. So at the free throw line, I'm just, you know, in my head, just, mm. you know, lock, locking in and, like, trying to visualize what the next play is going to be. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit a, you know, buzzer beater. And I'm picturing, I'm visualizing all this stuff, like, you know, my, you know the, the crowd going crazy and my teammates jumping, you know, all that. And then it it played out exactly that no way. way. I hit a buzzer, and it, and the shot, the way I shot the ball, and the way it bounced on the rim. There's no way it should, you know, it bounces on the very <laughs> back of the rim, and it went in. And I'm like, there's no way that should have went in. But then, and I'm like, wow, I I, I painted that picture before it happened, you know. So wow. stuff, you know, c- yeah. stuff like that continued to happen. Yeah. And then I'm just like, man, this stuff really works. Yeah, it's om- it's crazy. It's I've I've experienced a couple of those things. I used to have dreams before games in, okay. in college, and I would see exactly what yeah. would happen the, yeah. the next game. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, there's something outside of the realm that we just think it's it's linear train of thought and thinking right. that we can change and we can you right. know, upgrade in certain ways. Not for sure. Do you do, you do that for, for day-to-day life as well? Do you visualize certain things and in, in just like, you know, driving out here or, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, with your girlfriend or something like that? Oh, I mean, I mean, most definitely. Um, you know, now, now I write. You know, my goals day to day, what I cool. want to accomplish day to day, um, and that could be simply like sending out an email or responding to a phone a phone call. You know, yeah. and like, I think those small tasks lead to obviously bigger tasks. For sure. But um, you know, that's definitely played out in my relationship, played out in my you know my family, you know my family life, and just where I am today. Yeah. Um, you know, with the people I'm meeting today, you know, it's. It's kind of it's kind it's kind of amazing that you meet like minded people. Yeah. And you know, I'm just I'm just blessed and fortunate to be to be here with you and to yeah. be where I am. Yeah, likewise, man. And so you talked I know I know you finished your career at LMU like twenty fourteen, right? Yep, graduated twenty fourteen. And was social media a big part of that journey then? Um, I mean not necessarily like Instagram wasn't really out, um, or it was very fresh, like Twitter, you know, not really um, so no, I wouldn't, you know, Facebook was probably, you know, the biggest platform, but no, I wouldn't say social media played a big part. Um, like I said, when I, then when I graduated, it kind of played that negative role. Right. Um, when I was comparing myself to everybody's situation, but, um, but yeah, social media didn't really, you know, have an effect on, you know, what I did in college really. So how do you, how do you stance yourself now towards it to where it is a positive? Um, you know, like, you know, now that I got over that comparison um, trait, like now it's just focused for my purpose and, and business and trying to meet like-minded people yeah, like yourself and, cool, and create a community. Yeah. Um, and I think you can do that via social media because it makes the world so small. And, you know, I may, like my brother or my family member may not think like me or may not be business or entrepreneurship minded like me, but I can find someone like you who, who enjoys podcasts like I do, or I yeah. can find uh, someone in Texas that likes to invest in stocks or likes to invest in real estate, yeah. and, and we can, you know, have that conversation. So I think, you know, ha- you know, using Instagram or Twitter and, and building a community instead of using it for gossip or using it for to stay up to date on a celebrity's, you know, latest trend or, you know, so I've able to, I've been able to to use social media as like. Um, a, a platform and a, and a business platform yeah. um, to showcase what what I do and who I am as a human. Hundred percent. Yeah. So talk about your journey a little bit, man. In terms of, you know, you being an undersized guard a little yeah. bit, under recruited guard. Yeah. Like, how did that maintain? How did you maintain the love of the game um, as you were going through your as you go through your career right now? Um, you know, I'm actually still. Tr- I mean, still trying to figure that out. But just that passion. You know, yeah. I think 
just the love of the love of the bas- love of basketball and um and I'm very fortunate to find something that I love at a very young age. Um so just like continuing to develop that passion and 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 running with it, you know, and I was obviously I'm I'm a small guard, so you know, I've always had to have that chip on my shoulder and you know, in high school, you know, being in a small small state from you know Connecticut, it's overlooked yeah. by Boston and New York and you know states that are close to us. Um, so you know, I, w- I was under recruited. You know, I didn't. You know, my s- junior year, senior year, I didn't have any Division one offers. Really? R- yes. Just had like local interest, like from Sacred Heart University, Central Connecticut, which is low, low D one, and then. And then I just knew, like, I knew, like, you know, there's something bigger out there for me. Like, you know, if I continue to just put my head down and, and put in the work and just believe in my craft, you know, something's going to happen. And then, you know, I decided to go to LMU and then which was mid-major, you know, but like in the WCC, low major compared to St. Mary's, Gonzaga. So then, you know, I, I had that chip on my shoulder again, you know, and then you know, learning from the first time, you know, I'm like, okay, I can, this is just my path. This is just my road. It's always been not as ideal and very difficult, you know? So, you know, I just embraced that underdog mentality um, and did as much as I can, you know, with what I had at LMU. And, you know, I made the best of it. You know, I I think I'm like top three all time in scoring besides the the late Hank Gathers and Bo Kimball. Um, you know, you have a lot of records there and, you know, and and it's led into my professional professional life um you know just you know you have to have very thick skin you know just being able to play in Europe and being able to handle um you know the year to year contracts you know like yeah. it's it's tough to go into the summer n- you know not knowing if you're going to get a job you know but just still having that same mindset as I did in my senior year like you know this is going to pay off like regardless my passion this is what I love to do it's going to pay off and that's where that visionary would would come in come in like you know like I can easily go like you know oh, damn like my agent's not re- responding to my phone calls like the teams I should be getting they're not giving me the money I want like what's going on like should I just stop hooping but it's like no like this has been your path your whole life yeah you know so like this is just another test you know and how are you going to respond are you going to you know just be super negative or are you just going to find the positive and just continue to do what you resorted to which is the work awesome man and yeah. then what's what's been the craziest overseas experience you've had in terms of the cultures you've been in oh man i mean i would okay i would in, Li- in, Lithu- <laughs> in lithuania you know it's small country but they love basketball really okay. passionate about basketball so we had a rivalry game um and the team that was a big team um they're from the capital, big budget team. They're called uh, uh, Lutvis Ritis, um, the capital is Vilnius of Lithuania. So, and I'm playing in a smaller market team, um, Juventus, U- Utena Juventus. Um, and then we we play them at their place. We beat them, and then which is like an upset game. And then and then they come to our pl- and our fans are going crazy at at when we win. You know, like I don't know what they're saying. It's in <laughs> Lithuania. So then when they come to our place. Um, that you know pregame all that and then they throw up the ball and then we go to jump ball and then the whole fan section of their team they just throw toilet paper on the court <laughs> on the court and I'm like I'm like what is this like what's like this will never happen in the in the United States or in the NBA no. you know so like I'm like oh snap like this is crazy and then <laughs> they ended up beating us they took us out it was a very close game I think that was a sh- I missed a shot at the buzzer actually and then, um, so after that, they just start, you know, um, they win, so their fans are going crazy, but they start, like, um, not tear gas, but, like, the, um, you know, like, when you're, when you're on the side of the road and you've got to light those yeah, fire yeah, things, yeah, so yeah. that's what they're lighting, and our, and our whole gym, our whole arena is filled with smoke. I can't even, like, see who's next to me, you know, and, like, oh, wow. it was just, you know, it was, it was just super cool, and just to see how passionate they were, and, For like, sure. and that was, that was super cool just to see, you know. Yeah. And then, I mean, you've talked a, a lot about your, your meditation and, and just like the love that you have for the game. Um, one thing I, I would like to hear as well, so your slogan uh, that I was able to see for your camps was do what you love, love what you do. Yeah. And so when I was back in college, I was studying some like intrinsic motivation in terms of like just looking at what Michael Jordan, how, how he uses and describes how why he loves the game mm-hmm. and, and Kobe, why he loves the game. Mm-hmm. Like none of it had to do with anything external. It was all like the smell of the ball mm-hmm. or, you know, 
little things like that that yeah. keep you in that childlike yeah. bliss. Yeah. Um, does anything come to mind for you in the game that um, keeps you in that state when you are getting those distractions, right. when you yeah. are trying to find a contract? Yeah. Um, my mom always used to mention something to me, you know, because she would see me, like, throughout that process where, you know, I was, you know, training for NBA teams and, you know, trying to get in the, you know, that draft. Um, she saw me discouraged and stuff, you know, so she would always just say, you know, act like you're playing at the at Fairlawn mm. Park, which is a park down the street, you know, and I would, you know, she would just say, act like you're at the park, you know, and it's just a normal day, you know, like you would be there in the summer. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let me just take that mindset. Yeah. And then, you know, it brought me back to just that love of the game, you know, For sure. no pressure. You're just For sure. playing with your friends, you know, out there all day, you know, and just, and just loving the game and, and that passion. So I kind of just resort, res, just resort to that passion and, you know, how, how much it, how much it means to me and, you know, where basketball, you know, has taken me like a, a you know, round yeah. basketball has got me here today sitting wow. with you and yeah. brought me everywhere in Europe. And I played in numerous states in the, in, in the country, um, you know, and, my, and I had a, one of my mentors, um, like a father figure to me, uh, my coach from LMU, Max Good, you know, he would he would he would always have a quote. And like I said, he would just, you know, kind of say like this round ball has brought me everywhere I'm, I'm a, he would say I'm a small small kid from Maine and this brown ball has brought me to every single state in the <laughs> United States you know so like him saying that I was just like wow, wow. like you know yeah. like it's it's crazy what you know just a basketball and the game and your passion can bring you you know it really is man and no student loans if you think about yeah. it. yeah <laughs> yeah that, and that and that's why that's why I'm you know I'm super fortunate to be able to just find that passion yeah. because you know you see you see people now day to day just doing things that they don't love you yeah. know like my slogan do what you love love what you do yeah people will you know sell out for lack of a better term for a 100k job working in a corporate office when like yeah. they're in reality they don't want to be doing that you know mm -hmm. or that's not what they're passionate for but they've become so used to just like you know not you know just like selling themselves short yeah. you know every time just because oh let me let me go to school for four years because that's what society tells me to do I don't know what I want to do, so let me just go get my doctorate, or let me go get my, you know, like yeah. So I just, know exactly so just, so just things like that, and you know, I've been able to learn from people like that, you know, and like when I eventually have have kids, I would, you know, just provide them with the things I've learned, and you know, and like my biggest teachers are, you know, my family and just people are around me, and not to say that I'm compare myself to their situation but just learning from that you for know sure. learning from like yeah my mom had to sacrifice for you know single parent growing up but like she still like she loves what she does as a nurse but like I know there's something like within her that she wished she went after right. you know like right. she had us as you know she had us at a young age so she had to do what she had to do but everybody has a passion and it's hard to just tap into that yeah so you know I've just been super fortunate to be able to use basketball you know and like take yeah. me everywhere and do things like this yeah i'm happy for you man because i know i'm i'm definitely in that space right now because mm -hmm. i just finished hoop and i was like man do i want to go right. try and play in some low league overseas right. or something like that and now it's like okay what do i love to do right and so i have kind of shut down a couple offers to do right. other things that could be consistent money yeah but it's like all right what do I love to do? Yeah. And really, when you give yourself that space, yeah. it hits you, man. Yeah. It'll come out of you if no, you really sure. let it. Yep. But the, I think it's just that buffer period of like people get caught up in the comparisons. Yes. They get caught up in wanting to say, go to their family outings and like, yeah, I'm doing this now. Exactly. It's like, dude, you got to get, exactly. once you get over that, yeah. you can kind of, you can start to figure out yeah. what your true passion is. Yeah. I don't know if you feel the same way. No, exactly. And, and you know, like I, our biggest critics are our family and our yeah. best friends. You know, it's kind of yeah. like, well, it's kind of like, well, what are you doing? It's like, what are you doing now? It's like, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's like, why do I even get that question? Like, yeah. ask me about how I'm doing as a person. Yeah, like, just how am I as a being? Exactly. You yeah. know, it shouldn't be like, oh, what do you do for What do you do for a living? 100%. You know, that's, that's terrible, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not, I don't, you know, like to be around that. And, and naturally people just, you know, resort to those type of questions because, you know, that's just what they've been yeah. taught. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I don't judge them or blame them for it but i just you can realize like what type of conversations you mm -hmm. know people are used to having and you know yeah. and, and when i notice people are having those conversations i kind of like you know veer off and i'm an introvert at heart so you know i kind of just be in my own thoughts and just you know and just understand it and learn from that you know and learn from from 
you know what what they're what they're saying and ultimately like just that's not the way I want to be and that's aren't the conversations I want to have and then in terms of you talk when we talked a little bit about flow in in basketball sense and you talked about like coming onto the court mm-hmm. and it's like your instinct starts to come mm-hmm. out it's not you're not in your thinking mode mm-hmm. I was a, a shooter, and so sometimes I would get in my head. You know, right, you'd right, start right. to question, oh, God, like I'm 0 for 3. I can't yeah, <laughs> can't miss this next one, right. you know? So, like, what is your – like in a game, yeah, maybe you're nervous or something, like it's a big game. How do you reground back into that instinctual state for you? You know, I know you talked about trusting that work, but right. is there anything else that kind of mentally shifts you to where you use that mindfulness practice and you can kind of, okay, something's coming? But boom, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna lock back in. Yeah, I mean, it used to be very difficult for me, but now you know I'm going to my sixth season. Yeah, now it's it's fairly easy. You know, really? like once like I said, once the ball goes up, it's kind of like, you know, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. So, you know, and then once I once I do something good, even if it doesn't even have to be like score or make an assist, yeah. like even if I split the defense or or make yeah. a good pass or, you know make a pump fake and dish it to someone you know it's like okay now i'm in the rhythm you know Mm. now now i'm in my rhythm and once you find that rhythm it's like you're not even you're not even thinking like i said you're playing off your instincts so it's definitely it's hard to tap into every game but i'm getting to the point where i where i'm just naturally getting there um you know and just playing off your playing off your instincts is when when you play the best that's it's cool that you said that this is where I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. and and that's something I've wrestled with a little bit is when you're always in that go 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 trying to figure out what yeah. you got to do yeah you don't ever feel like you're right where you're supposed to be right you're like you're and a step short you're, yeah, yeah I've always laughed at that because I'm yeah. like all right you know if, if God's got me here to do this yep. and I'm always worrying about doing something else it's like right. when am I ever gonna just be right you know right. and so that's a deep insight I'm you probably weren't even thinking about that but like yeah. Do you do you find yourself in that like especially now where you're waiting for a contract mm-hmm. or you're trying to figure something out? Mm-hmm. Um, is it tough to stay in that? Hey man, this is where I'm supposed to be. Not really, not anymore because um, I've been through it so many times. Yeah. You know, it's hard. Like I said, it's hard for other people to realize and understand because everybody's so used to just the corporate world and for sure job, 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 nine to five. This is what I do for the yeah. rest of my life. You know, so other people have a hard time grasping what I do. You know, but for me, it's like. This is just yeah. this is just the business. This You're is how free. it is, you know. Like, I'm used to I'm used to this. I'm used to the adversity, you know. Ever since a you know, little kid, I'm I'm five nine, five ten at best. So I'm used to that adversity. Um, so I think you know it just it just paints a, a you know a, a better picture in the long run. Yeah. Um, and these traits and qualities I'm able to use when that when that time comes and when my number is called. Um, and I think um, you know, and, and not second guessing yourself. You know, yeah. knowing I'm I'm supposed to be in this moment. Like this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be in the NBA because I'm supposed to be learning these these qualities and these traits right now. You know, and maybe the NBA will eventually come or will eventually come. But you know, right now is where I'm supposed to be. You know, like even though it may look like you know I'm facing a lot of adversity or this is a roadblock, but then when I do get to where I want to be or 20 years down the line, I look back. I'm like, oh. That's why I went yeah, through that. Makes sense. Or that's why this happened to me. Or that's why I didn't get this opportunity. You know. So sure. looking back in hindsight, they always say hindsight is twenty twenty. So yeah. like looking back, you always realize like, you know, that's I was. That's the lesson I needed at that point. Yeah, you and know? I feel like that your mindfulness meditation practice at an early age probably allowed you to grasp this faster than most people because. Mm-hmm you do have a lot more time to think when right. you're by yourself over yeah. there. In oh, Europe yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. You know, wherever you're at. Yeah. And also now in these spaces, because you could be like, oh, shoot, like I I got to be doing this by now. Right. You know, these right. guys exactly. are all signed. Exactly. NBA just started. Exactly. You know, and so I think you having that that buffer, and uh-huh. then, which is why I love talking about it on the podcast, mm-hmm. because I, I think it's super cool when athletes can, can discuss it. But- Meditation, I think – is key for that you know if you if you're not aware of your thoughts you just become you know what you're thinking and you're just riding the emotions of the day yeah and then and then you just you're like on autopilot for sure and then you're just doing the same thing every single day and that and that's not a life you know that's not the life i want i want to live you know so just you know trying to be in the moment as as much as i can um and it's easier said than done but you know just practicing through through mindfulness awareness and and meditation it's allowed me to just 
you know, just, just center myself, you know, even when something, you know, me and my girlfriend may have a disagreement, you know, and she reacts one way, but I'm just reacting like, okay, you know, like everything's going to be fine, you know, or like me and my mother may see something differently. And she's just like, how do you, you know, some, I may lose $500 and she's just like, how are you so calm? (laughs) It's like, you know, like it's going to be all right. Like stuff like this happens, you know, and like just finding, you know, just finding that center and, and being being able to tap into it, yeah, you know, and not and not losing losing that focus. It's interesting you bring up your mom a little bit in terms of you know they're gonna have their responses. And my mentor always talks about like our parents are our clouds, mm. and like our our lineage is almost like our family lineage. There's gonna be things that you gotta bust through to be mm-hmm. your you know your mm-hmm. ray of light. Mm-hmm. You gotta be you mm-hmm. in terms of you know there might be reactions there might be thought patterns there might be di- given things that are tough to go through mm-hmm. but i think the practices like mindfulness and meditation can cause you to to illuminate those things yeah. and you can choose differently yeah. you know you can choose to react in a certain way that's right. not like detrimental and ruins your whole day right 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 um yeah go ahead no cuz i mean cuz at the end of the day they come from they come from a good place for sure you know like you 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 know you initially judge them like you know, mom, like, why are you, why are you yeah. asking me about this? Like, this is my sixth year. Like I've, this is what I do, <laughs> you know, like I'm fine. Like things, yeah. you know, it just, this is how it plays out, you know, but they don't necessarily, my father understands, you know, my father's more, I take, I think my mindset more for my dad. Um, But like my mom is just, you know, like I said, she's just been driven her whole life. Yeah. Yeah. We've been working since she's 16, 17, you know, so that's all she knows is like a routine and, and schedule and just I got to be here. And, you know, so, mm. um, you know, so I know it's not coming from a bad place. It's just, you know, people don't really understand the business of, of overseas sports and for sure and just professional athletes in general. Um, and that's OK. You know, it's okay for you not to understand or for you to disagree, but I know it's fine. Yeah. You know, but but sometimes you don't want to hear it. You know, sometimes yeah. you just like it can. You know, you get a text message in the morning and it's like, where are you going? Where are you where are you signing at? But it's like, it, but it's from my mom, so I know it's coming from a good place. But it's like, okay, let me just call her and yeah, you know, tell her like, yeah, mom, it's gonna be all right. Yeah. You know, this is just how it works. Right. I feel like that's a prerequisite to flow. Is right. You gotta be where you're at like yeah. you gotta be all right we're doing the podcast right now right, we're not right. we're not somewhere else you know yeah. and so do you at least for me at a young age for whatever reason i had this like compulsive workout like i would work out so hard mm-hmm. but it almost was like out of fear it mm-hmm. was like oh I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna lose my shot mm-hmm. or right yeah you know i gotta keep training i gotta mm-hmm. go 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 mm-hmm. go and then i get to college and i'm working so hard mm-hmm. but i felt like at some level that deterred me from my fullest potential because yeah. i was I didn't, I didn't know when to switch that off. Yeah. You know, I couldn't go be with my friends right. without thinking about my next workout yeah, 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 yeah. or I couldn't get to the game and be like, Oh, I, I didn't work on this enough. Or right. for, for me, I was just overthinking it, overdoing. Yeah. So do you, do you ever feel that way in terms of when you're training up for an upcoming season? Or is that something that you've always been able to kind of buffer and be like, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm free when I'm hooping. I'm at that park mm-hmm. when I'm back home. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, I used to, I used to for sure. Like you said, in high school, middle school, college even all i knew was work just work hard yeah. work out two three times a day yeah but now you know going to my sixth year now it's like um i have to take those days off those days off are more important than actually going to getting up 400 jumpers Jeez, or 500 bro. jumpers yeah. you know so like and i forget what podcast i was listening to but um they or uh, it was an nba player and he was saying no it was my last podcast i did orlando oh, cool. johnson and he was saying and I asked him, you know, what was the difference in work ethic? You know, because he, you know, we pride ourselves on hard work. And he would say, you know, I, my first year, my rookie year, I was in the gym all day. And he would notice some of the vets weren't. So he was just like, you know, while I was getting those physical reps up, I wasn't getting enough mental reps up. You know, so, th- so then you have to realize, like, you do need a day off. Your body does need to rest, mm. you know, so and your mind needs to rest and your mind. And then that's when the visual visualization comes yeah. into play or the meditation or just just reading, you know, like, yeah, you can work on other things or watching film. You can work yeah. on other things outside of, you know, just taxing your body, 100%. you know, so just so just being able to find that balance and, and getting those physical reps and what you need to put the work in, but also having that that balance and that mental reps, because yeah. now at, at the point where I am, it's it's more important for me to get rest and to be 
healthy. Yeah. You know, a lot of people most can't m- play if you're hurt. Yeah, and for the most part, you know, you look in the playoffs, everybody's hurting. Yeah. You know, so like they need they need those off days. You need the summer to to relax and and take that take the str- you know, all the taxing stuff mm-hmm. off your body. So I think now I'm at the point where it's you know, now I need to take those days off. I need to get in the Normatec or do physical therapy yeah. um, more than running all day and working out two for two hours. Yeah, I think that's huge to to bring up though, because you see those like those funny jokes of uh, like when Damian Lillard's in the studio or something, they're like oh, in the yeah. gym, yeah, yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it's funny to me because that's how I viewed athletes growing up. Mm. I was like, oh, these guys are always grinding. You know, yeah. I got I got to work harder. I got to yeah. wake up before. Yeah, you know, and there was nothing wrong with me doing that. Right, and it taught me a lot about myself. Yeah, but I think at some level it didn't give me that holistic perspective of mm-hmm. like man, you're still a human being. Like right. you still got to be able to right. be where you're at and be, be okay. Like let, let a game go. That'd yeah. be another interesting thing you could hit on in terms of like, let's say you have a really bad game. Mm-hmm. Like how do you let it go? Or you have a really good game. Mm-hmm. How do you let it go? Yeah, man, it used to be hard for me, man. Like <laughs> yeah, me too, when I was in, even especially overseas, cause you're by yourself, you know, I used yeah. to have a bad game. My first year I was in France. Um, I have a bad game and I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't talk to like, I wouldn't mm. respond to my girlfriend family friends no i'm like i'm fall fall off the earth for for at least 24 hours yeah you know but now it's like now that it's a job and you know i still love what i do but it's like being able to separate on the court from off the court you know so like i may go two for ten but i know at the week we're gonna have another game yeah you know or i may we may lose but there you know i'm still i'm not just gonna be depressed off the court Mm -hmm. you know i'm still gonna laugh i'm still gonna go out to eat with my teammates and talk to my family, you know, mm-hmm. and my girlfriend, um, cause I can't let that translate into, into my, my personal life. Yeah. You know, I have to be able to separate the two. Yeah. Um, so then once that clicked for me, it took me about until my, f- probably like my fourth year when I was in Lithuania. Wow. Um, so you were what? 20, I was about 20, uh, 25, 25, 26. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it yeah, it took me till then to like you know be like all right, it's gonna be okay. And yeah. Then like there's another game, you know you can't just yeah. be mad and just shut off from the world. You know like there'll be another opportunity. You'll have yeah. another shot. You know just get back in the gym. <laughs> yeah. You know you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, man. But it was definitely a hard process to to learn and to understand. Yeah. I mean, I dude, I broke up with my girlfriend after a bad game one time. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't right. like stay like. Right. I was like, nah. I can't do it. Yeah, like I yeah, got yeah. like I'm up all day thinking about this, but I it's that's been an interesting question for me to to ask people because um like I had an Olympic decathlete on here once and mm. his his biggest recovery is like, dude, when I'm with my family and I'm mm. not on my phone, that's when my, all my, you know, hormones go out that it's like, oh, it's time to relax. Mm. It's time to mm. be okay. Mm-hmm. And then I had uh, a baseball player, first team all-American from Vanderbilt, okay, who he had 14 hitless games his senior senior year, and he's oh, still wow. first team All American. So there's like you're gonna fail, yeah, it's way more than you even realize. Oh, yeah. But it's really that how do you bounce back faster? Yeah, and I feel like when you're able to tap into that, then it's then then you can really start to shine because then yeah. there's not as much pressure. Because this is what I thought when I was reacting so poorly there, I was putting like a fear for my next game, like mm-hmm. oh god, I don't want to feel like that again. Mm-hmm. So now there's more pressure for the game. Yeah. But why do you think that is? Do you think it's because your identity was in the game? Is that why it it hurt you so much like after the games because you didn't want to talk to people? Because it's like I've always I've still tried to figure yeah. out like why I've reacted that way. Yeah, it's a great question. I think yeah, like you said, man. Um, I think you know we just resort to to all we know, you know, and like, yeah, and like all we know was work, work, work. Yeah, you know, until we knew otherwise, mm. until somebody taught us otherwise. So then, like, when you lose a game, it's like, damn, I got to go get back in the gym. Like, yeah. I'm trash right now. Yeah. You know, but not realizing, like, you need that break. You need mm-hmm. that. Even if it's a mental break from the game. 100%. You know, you need that, like, just to reset. Yeah. And then come back and and then you're fine. You know, because like you said earlier, yeah. um, if I missed a day of shooting, I'd be like, damn, my jumper is going to be yeah. weak tomorrow. Yeah. You know, but then realizing, like, this summer I had to take an extended period of time off. It took, like, a month and a half off. Because of the hip, right? Because, yeah, because of my surgery. And then... You know, I'm like, damn, I wonder how my jumper is going to be. Like, mm. I wonder how my flow is going to be. Yeah. And then it just came back naturally. Oh, 100%. Like, it was just natural. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Like, so I don't really need 
to like like mm-hmm. yes, I do need to put in the work and the time. I know exactly. But like I put yeah. in so many hours <laughs> that the foundation is yeah. there. Yeah. And I had a veteran my rookie year, um, lights out shooter. Um, he went to play at NC State, and he would he would never work on his like just like you know you stay after <laughs> practice get at least a hundred makes. Yeah. He would never, yeah. never, and he would always tell us like, oh yeah, I used to do the I used to do that same thing like stay after practice and shoot all day on the gun, and then. I would never see him work on his shot, but he would, oh, his jumper was lights out, yeah. water. Yeah. And then I'm just like, what? Like, how the hell is he done? <laughs> never see him work on his game. And it was just like that mental, that yeah. mental state. Like, no, I'm I, I'm a pro. Like, I yeah. put in, like, I've read this, you probably heard, Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. Mm. Like, it, okay, so he basically breaks it down and saying to become a professional at anything, you have to put 10,000 hours in. Yeah, okay. In. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that, that mark 10,000 hours, yeah. I've put 10,000 hours Easy. into my craft. Easy. So, like, knowing that, it's like yeah. the foundation is there. Now mm-hmm. it's just skill work and just getting my mind to switch gears, you know, into, Quick like, yeah. and, into what I need to be doing. Yeah. So, like, you know, it, it, it was a lot of, like, instances that brought me back to, like, like, wow, like, I will be okay. Like, my jumper's still there. Yeah. It's just – the foundation is there. Yeah. You know, I don't have to stress about it. 100%. You know, I've already put the work in. I'm 10,000 hours yeah. in, you know, like. Yeah, it's man. such a tough concept to talk about because I feel like bo- you and I both have worked hard to, to be able to say that. No, oh, you know, you, you got to gotta go through those, like, those grind periods yes. to be like, okay, I can let go now. Yeah. But it's crazy, man. Like, my best games are always when I let go. And uh-huh. I'm not worrying about uh-huh. those things. I'm right. really in that flow. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also – I also used to despise the kids who I knew weren't putting in the work like me. Mm-hmm. And then I would see them go and hit hit shots in the oh, games. Man. Oh. And I'd be like, yo, yeah, h- how? Bro. How are you doing that? Bro. But also now I kind of get it, you know, but yeah. it's, it's still at the same time, it's tough. It's yeah. tough to let that ego go of like, man, I worked hard. I deserve this. Yeah, yeah, To where sure. it's like, man, I'm just enjoying the game. No, one funny example, <laughs> man. So when I go back home and like – you know, I play in, like, the hood tournaments where, you know, like, <laughs> like almost like a Rucker Park type of vibe, yeah. you know. And, you know, all, like, the, the OGs who don't play a lick of basketball <laughs> ever. You know, all my friends who don't really hoop like that anymore just here and there. And then they'll run off, like, two straight tray balls. And I'm like, <laughs> what, bro? Like, how? You know, like, there's no, like, you put in no work, yeah, bro. Exactly. So how are you not, and they're talking, like, talking crazy, like, oh, I'm better than you. Like, I could take you. I'm like, and then he'll hit the jumper. And I'm like, how? Like, I put in way more work than you. How are you knocking this down? Yeah. You know, like, so just like, it's a funny story like that, man. Just, yeah. It's just like, and then it brings it just back to like, just having that confidence. 100%. You know, that supreme confidence and, you know, and that having that balance, man. Did you see uh, Gerald Green before he got picked up last year by the Rockets? He was like, his post was like, man, all, he, he started going off. I think he had like, Back-to-back 20-point games uh-huh. when he came back, uh, yep. when the Rockets signed him. Yep. And he's like, all I've been doing is like shooting around. With my dog. With my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, I, he he tapped in. He yeah. figured it out. Yeah. He figured out the code. Like, you, yeah. you've you gotten to that level. Right. All right. You know, there's freaks like LeBron. Yeah. You, you're probably never going to get there, Gerald. Right, But right. You, you figured out, like, your role, mm-hmm. and you don't need to kill yourself to get there. You no. just got to stay healthy. Yeah. And we're, and kind of fine tune yeah. once you get to that level. Yeah. So, do you feel like you're on that path now to where like you're just fine tuning and you can just continue oh, yeah. to build up to the NBA? For sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, now I'm at a place. I'm at a good place right now. Yeah. Um, to where like, I can I can take two days off and I could take a day off and much needed days Huge, off. Man. Yeah. You know, and like come back and be really sharp and yeah. not think like, oh damn, like I missed. I didn't get any jumpers this weekend. Yeah. You know, like my jumper might be off, but it's like no, like. Like I said, the foundation is there, um, so just like always resorting back t- to to what to the work and the work the work I put in. That's awesome, man. And could you talk about your visualization process a little bit? Like, what are you envisioning? What do you? How do you tap into it? So, I used to. Um, one thing. Let me just throw this out there. Yeah. Changing my diet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a vegetarian, cool. so changing my diet played a huge role in being able to tap in. But in terms of what tapping in the visualization, in ter- or just your vi- life, just vi- yeah, my life in general. But like just the visualization, um, how my body responded, how sharp my mind was, really um, being able to tap in quicker. Cool. Um, but um, an example, you know, that I was when I started just on the visualization process, like I would the very I would. Um, 
the day before a game in college, we had a big game, um, played UCLA, Josh Smith. This Ooh, was like okay. when Josh Smith was like Josh Smith, Josh Smith, the big, the big, the big guy yeah, got from you, out here. Got you. So this was like they had Reeves Nelson, um, Malcolm Lee. They had yeah. a bunch of guys. They had and, some good squads. Yeah, back then, and then you know they're playing LMU underdog. We're underdogs. Yeah. So like, you know, the night before a game, I'm just. I can remember I'm, at, I'm getting out the training room. I got up shots late night, probably leaving like 9.30. I took a shower. And then I'm just looking at the stars, like, you know, just visualizing, how, mm. you know, how many how many points I want to get, just visualizing us celebrating the victory, uh, our, us in the newspaper on social media. And then, you know, we ended up beating them that game. I had like 22. I'm a sophomore at the time, 22 and like seven against UCLA. That's big time. Huge, you know? bro. Um, so then like, and then it led to me just every time shoot around, you know, looking at looking up at the at this at the scoreboard, seeing what the score was, seeing how many points I wanted to get. Like, say I wanted to get like eighteen to twenty, eighteen to twenty, twenty one. Then I would get like nineteen. Then I would get twenty. Now I did that every game. Shoot around, I'd look up at the scoreboard. Okay, yeah, let me get like twenty four tonight. <laughs> and then it would play out like that. So then I'm like, Okay, this is working, you know. So yeah. that so then I I was able to visualize you know everything that I've wanted. You know in in my life up to this point. Um, but going back to the diet, um, you know, like like you said earlier, I've I had a lot of time overseas to myself. You know, so sure. just doing a lot of research on myself, um, getting to know cultures, getting to know my culture, um, and then just getting to know diet. What what diet is good for this you know um, person or or whatever. You know, so. I, you know, I just started doing experiments with just vegetarian, a um, little bit of vegan. Um, and then, you know, I was eating like terrible my first year. McDonald's, I'm overseas. It's all I, I'm, all I know is McDonald's. Right, right, right. So I would eat McDonald's and then go to practice and I couldn't tap in. I couldn't yeah. tap into just that rhythm and just everything being second nature. You know, it would just be frustrating everything. Were you feeling like sluggish or was it more mentally? It was just like- men- mentally. I just, I was just like unsure, um, second guessing myself and then and then I started like okay you know I started reading more, um, you know following different people on Instagram like, you know what we're supposed to put in our bodies what you know naturally supposed to go in our bodies at this amount of time at this time what we're supposed to be eating at this time, yeah. um, and then I found myself getting into that zone much easier much wow. quicker in practice so I would do like little experiments throughout the week and then apply that to the game day and then it it would pay off and then. Cool. I eventually came, you know, came up with, you know, not came up with, like, found a quote was just like, you, you, you're not gonna uh, fuel a Ferrari with 85, 85 unleaded. Yeah. You know, you need super unleaded. You need that real gas for a Ferrari. And I'm, I treat my body like, like a Ferrari. So I'm not gonna yeah. put In and Out or Burger King in in my body because yeah. it's not gonna do anything. I'm gonna feel terrible, and then I'm, I'm not gonna be able to tap in. Mm. And those, you know, those those traits that you put in your body then affect your way of thinking you know because we have two two brains our gut and our and obviously our brain um you know and they go and they go hand in hand so once you're able to you know realize that and you know i like i said i've done experiments um and i was on this five six years ago before all the all the hype now (laughs) you know before everybody all everybody's in the league is going vegan and all this stuff i was on that back then so it's it's just good to see the evolution of people but like or the culture, but you know that played a hand in my visualization and just being able to tap into that flow and that cool. rhythm of the game. You do know? you do you try to um, like do you do any type of fasting in terms of mm-hmm. like maybe a twenty four hour fast or just like hey this is um, like six p.m. I'm not going to eat anything mm-hmm. before bed. Mm-hmm. Do you do anything like that? Um, I do. I mean, the cliche thing is they do intermittent call it intermittent yeah. fasting. Yeah. Um, but if you do the knowledge behind what it is, it's it makes sense. Um, so I, for me, I won't I won't eat anything until like about twelve one twelve to two. Okay. Yeah, that'll be my first meal. And my first meal because your body has to digest everything that's happened last night for or sure. whatever you ate the day before. Um, so then, uh, so then once I realize like. You know, the first thing we're supposed to do when we wake up is drink drink water, preferably hot lemon water. Right, water. right. Um, just to get your immune system going, your digestive system going, wake it up. Um, and then go about your day, and then I would usually, from like 12 to one thirty two, um, then I, 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 I'm into smoothies. So I would, you know, an example of my smoothie would be almond milk, a ba- almond milk base, banana, strawberries, 
kale. Um, I throw some like almonds, pumpkin seeds in there, and then like some sp some uh, spirulina, which is like a like an algae. Spirulina and chlorella are like these um, like green like green foods, and like gotcha. they have um, also sea moss is really good. And sea moss, you have um, like our body is made up of like a hundred and something like hundred and sixty something chemicals, something like that. And sea moss and spirulina or chlorella have about like eighty of those things. Wow. In just like that powder or the uh or at the actual sea moss. Um so just like, you know, like I said, doing that doing that knowledge and you know, understanding when I'm supposed to eat and yeah. when my body is supposed to, you know, be digesting things. Yeah. Um and not over overdoing it, you know, because yeah. if you think about it, you know, our digestive system never gets a break. Mm -mm. Never. We're, you know, especially in America, not so much yeah. in Europe, but Snacking. we're so consumed to three meals a day. But it's like, yeah. you don't need three meals a day. I, I totally agree. Eating yeah. terrible, like red meat, you know, fries, just tear. Our diets are terrible. Yeah. Um, And you're in Europe, obviously, because we've mass produced everything in America, which makes it even worse. But like in Europe, they don't take that approach as much. Mm. Um. You know, so it's it, I've been able to to see it from both sides, but um, but yeah, man, like that's cool. diet and knowing when to eat and what to put in your body at certain times yeah. is huge. Yeah, that's that's what I've been trying to tap into, uh, more and more. Not just like what I'm putting in my body, but mm -hmm. why. Yeah. In terms of like, am I in an emotional state? Am I emotionally eating right now? Yeah. Uh, why, when, yeah. you know, like those are just as important yeah. in some in some capacity. Yeah. You know, obviously, like what you put in is yeah. is very important, but like noting that is is another way to see your unconscious patterns mm -hmm. man like why are you reacting this way mm -hmm. why are you doing what you're doing mm -hmm. so i mean appreciate the uh the insights there man no um, yeah, man for sure so then i was i was wanted to go into like a rapid fire for like sure. question deal yeah, um like yeah. i said uh big gonzaga fan growing <laughs> up i got the key, i got him on the keychain i think oh man hey gonzaga might be the the best like <laughs> Just like home advantage, it, like I ever played against, but like the kennel is crazy. Really? Oh so, my! So God. actually, before I get into that, that was actually one thing. Could you talk about maybe one peak performance you had in hoops Ooh. that was like the moment? For Zags. You? Zags, Zags. Yeah. Okay, go in. Zags. Bro. So <laughs> this was crazy. Like, so I'm going. You know, I played at. I don't know. No, this is my junior year. Okay. So we, you know, I played at Gonzaga. Probably, you know. I played them at least six, eight times already. Um, so we go up to the kennel, and, you know, this was the only place in the WCC that the fans would be there shoot around. So, like, two <laughs> hours before the game. Wait, what? Yeah, two hours before the they game. They were allowed in the shoot around? Right, yeah. Two hours before the game, they're talking. They're talking <laughs> no, stuff. No, they're you know not. So, like. So, they're watching you guys' plays? Yeah, stuff? yeah. yeah they're, no, 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 no. Like, like. Pre-game warm-up. Got you, not got you. Around. Okay, sorry, okay, sorry. okay. Not, not shooter I was about to say, I was <laughs> like, dang. They're, they're no, 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 no. So pre-game warm-ups, which is about two hours before the game. Yeah. Um, And they're heckling me. Because I'm averaging, my junior year, I average like 22 yeah, you know, for the season. Yeah, you're cooking. So they're heckling me. They know, they're like, Ireland, you suck. Like, you're not going to do anything tonight. Pangos is going to shut you down. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, and I'm hearing them. And that, and that made me start listening, to, you know, keeping my headphones on during, during the, the warm-up. So... The, the fans, the Gonzaga fans, made me start doing this. Now I do it to this day. So anyways, so then um, I'm like, okay, you know, like I go through my routine. They're still talking trash. And they're just saying, like, you guys suck. They're mentioning our record and all that. So I'm like, all right, bet. And then, you know, so we come out. Um, I pour 21 on them in the first half. <laughs> you know, so like, and this is like Olenek. Like yeah. Sam Dower. They were number one that year. Yeah, that, they're nasty. It's Sam Dower, Pangos, um, Man, they, they had a squad. They had everyone. Uh, Gary, Bell. Gary Bell, yeah, who was really good. Yeah, um, he was he was the one guarding me, and then so I pour I pour twenty one on him in the first half, <laughs> and then and we're tied. But like obviously, Gonzaga is a high major program. Yeah, it's a mid major, but it's a high major yeah. program. Um, so we we shouldn't even be in this game, compared. You know, if you look at the you know on the stat sheet. So, you know, then then we come out second half, and. You know, they slowed me down. I ended up with 38. Um, <laughs> they, they slowed me down a little bit. But we ended up, we ended up losing by, like, maybe, like, 13 or 12. You know, like, yeah. there was no way, like, I could keep that up. And, you know, they keyed on me the whole second half. Yeah. Um, so I ended up with 38. And then, you know, my coach, like I said, he, t he takes me out of the game. 
and that was and that was the first time I got a standing ovation. Wow! I got a standing ovation from the you know the everybody in in the kennel. You know the from you know because students sit on the left, the fans and everybody, and the wow. fans sit on the right. So I, I'm coming out of the game and coach subs me out with like a minute and 30 left and then you know they just stand an ovation just clapping you know i'm like wow i'm just looking like damn like you know and i'm just you got like, the chills or what yeah i've got the ch- i'm getting the chills now that's but like, crazy bro but like i was like damn i had 38 on these dudes you know what i'm you know so yeah. it was like it was like wow okay like Dude. you know i'm here you know like yeah they, like mark few he's gonna remember me you know so like For sure you know and i you know i have a great relationship with mark few but um you know, it was just, you know, that's just a great memory, man. Like, dude, that is you know, doing that an awesome story, dude. Up at the kennel, you know, so, like, that was cool. What? One more question before we get in the rapid fire. Mm-hmm. You kind of re- reminded me one, one thing I wanted to ask you. I saw, you know, you being a first team all WCC three years straight. Yeah. Obviously, everybody's going to start keying on you. Yeah. How did that affect your flow when you know, like, all right, they're probably going to, you know, they might double me on some pick and rolls. Yeah. They might they might come at me a little mm-hmm. bit. Like, did that change your your mindset at all, or are you just like trying to stay in that instinct? Um, yeah, man, I was just a dog, man. I just tried to be, you know, just tried to stay in that dog mentality. Um, and you know, people threw all type of defenses at me, but it just I had to just tweak my game a little bit. Yeah, you know, I had to pick my spots better. Um, know when to score, know when to like take more of the load on. Um, and I had to realize like I had to understand like oh they're blitzing me off every screen mm-hmm. and pick and roll. So like. I can't take on the double team every time, you know, like I, that's what I would do. Cause I'm like, okay, I can beat, I can get around you, but by the six, seven time it's, I'm it's taxing. Like I'm going to be yeah. tired. So like being able to get that pocket pass, being able to have my, my defender twist the screen yeah. or, you know, throwing the overhead pass and then coming out for a handoff again. So just like, you know, just being able to tweak my game and learning. Um, I had a really good coach uh, who recruited me, Chris Farr. He's um, very well known in the NBA. He, he was on the Denver Nuggets um, player development. He now he strictly just works with Demar and Damian Lillard throughout the summer. That's his job. Nice. But um, so he was he was just teaching me like, you just got to get off the ball. You got to get off the ball and come get it. You know, like you're like you'll get your shots, but like don't press, don't force it. You know, and like get off the ball in terms of get the ball away from yeah, get and, get and like work off screen, get the ball, hit ahead, and then come back and get it. Got when you. it's like 13 seconds, defense is broken down, and then call for a pick and roll. Got you. And then it didn't click to me until my junior year. We played uh no my sophomore year, we played um Damian Lillard in the CIT tournament. We matched up with Weber State. So, and Damian and my coach is both from Oakland. So he you know they knew each other. You know so he was just saying and that was you know. Damian Lillard, so he's a yeah. senior year, top ten draft. Yeah. So he was like, "Oh, we'll, you know, we'll win this game." And I'm like, "What? Like, we're going up against a elite pro? Like, what do you <laughs> mean he's about to pour buckets on us?" He's like, "No, we'll win this game. No, watch, watch, we'll win." He was like, no, "He's he's not gonna press. He's not gonna like, you know, when things go bad, we're, we're and 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 if we're and if they're and if we're we're up by eight, he's not gonna like go in the lane and press. And that's what that's what I had to learn like my sophomore year." Not as much my junior year, and definitely not my senior year. I would I would press like if I feel like we're gonna lose or you know things aren't going our way, I would just run in the lane, try to get a foul, just look bad, yeah, you know, not play yeah. good basketball, yeah. you know. And and once I seen Damian Lillard, like he was just in flow, and it wasn't he wasn't pressing, like he wasn't like searching for a shot. It was just like okay, if it comes to me, boom. But like if they double team me, I'm gonna kick it out, and if the dude misses the shot, I'm gonna live with it, you know. But like, yeah. I'm not gonna. Cause I'm sure he learned that lesson as well. Yeah, you know, so That's a good I just had to like, you know, just tweak my game a little bit. Yeah, you know, and then once I seen Dame do it, I'm like, oh, okay, now yeah. I got it. Now yeah. I got it. No, that's that's a good insight, man. Yeah. And then so the little rapid fires I I, I pulled up. So all time WCC starting five, Ooh, but wow. you're you're at the one. Okay. But you got to give me your four other guys who maybe who yeah let's let's go with guys you played against in your okay. in your four years. Damn. I know I'm gonna leave out some guys, man. <laughs> oh man, I would say, I mean, definitely Olenek. Like he Kay. was. So is he at the, he's at the five? No, I'd put him at the four. Okay. I put him at the four, um, or no, we could put him at the five, because I would put. Whew, shit, I'm gonna miss so many guys. Um, I'm trying to think back to those teams. Yeah, I would. I would say. Oh man, I would say <laughs> uh the guy uh Stacy Davis, he went to Pepperdine. Okay, like, I remember him. Yeah, he was, was he like, a two or three. That's what I'm saying. He was a mismatch nightmare. Like he was about really? six six, six five. 
um, strong, but like could move, could shoot a little bit, banger. Um, so he would be at the three. Um, St. Mary's had to have. Oh did yeah, they have oh, yeah, Sam yeah. Hand back then. Nope, they had um, they had Delhi. Um, so we could throw Delhi in there. We could throw Delhi at the two. Yeah, we could put Delhi at the two. Orchestrator runs. Oh man, he, we had some battles. He's great. Uh, so me, Delhi, um, throw Stacy Davis at the four. Um, I say Olenek at no no Stacy Davis at the three. Olenek at the four, and at the five. Ah, that's tough. Just a true five. Man, I would just have to say Elias Harris. I just mm. go with two big guys, Olenek and Elias. No, no, not Elias Harris. What? Sacre. Robert Sacre. Sacre. Yeah. Got you. So he, was he there? He was probably there your first year or second? First two years. Okay, got you. Got hit with some crazy screens. <laughs> Running, chasing pangos. Sacre hit you. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a, that's it. That's a cool one. Brings back some memories. Yeah. Man, well, really appreciate you coming on. Is there yeah. anything else you wanted to tap into before we close it out? No, nah, man. I mean, I appreciate, you know, yeah. appreciate you inviting me on. Um, you know, you can follow me, you know, all the viewers at AI A Island 3 on Instagram and um, Twitter. Um, you can follow the stuff we're doing my academy at AI3 Leadership Academy on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook as well. And then to check out my podcast, it's uh, called The Grind Podcast. And, you know, we do similar stuff like you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, reach out to those platforms if you want to know more about myself and what I do. Awesome, man. Well, but appreciate thanks, you coming out here. Yeah, no doubt. Hopefully man. the drive isn't as long back. But nah, yeah, drive is really good. <laughs> we'll link again soon, man. For sure. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys for tuning into the Flow Station podcast. If you enjoyed it, please rate it, share with your friends, and uh, follow us on Instagram at Flow Station Podcast or Twitter at The Flow Station. Um, more content on the way, more guests, and uh, more flowing to do. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.